Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, optimization, dynamical systems and machine learning. In this tutorial we will explain how polar coordinates can be used to elegantly analyze the stability of dynamical systems. For example, Consider this nonlinear system. The main question is, is the equilibrium point of this system asymptotically stable, stable or unstable? Is this a difficult question? The answer is yes and no, depending on the path that we take. If we take the classical path for analyzing the stability of nonlinear systems, we will most likely have to construct, or better to say, to find a Lyapunov function for this system, and then we will have to compute the first derivative of the Lyapunov function, and then analyze the sign or definiteness of the first derivative of the Lyapunov function. And we might not be able to provide a definite answer to the question of stability. Another approach that is also difficult and, in fact, impossible, as I have shown in my follow-up video, is to linearize the system and then, on the basis of linearization, to try to conclude something about the stability of the equilibrium point of the nonlinear system. And, as I have explained in my follow-up video, we cannot follow this approach simply because the linearized system, or better to say the eigenvalues of the linearized system, are on the imaginary axis, and this implies that we cannot provide a definite answer to the stability of nonlinear systems. So, how to analyze the stability of this system? The stability analysis approach that actually works in this case is based on polar coordinates. In this video, we explain how the polar coordinates can be used to analyze the stability of the equilibrium point of this system. By the end of this video, you will learn how to construct a state-space trajectory of this system by using polar coordinates. You will learn that the state-space trajectory looks like this. That is, you will be able to show that this system or better to say its equilibrium point is unstable. Okay, let us introduce the polar coordinates. This is our state space plane. x1 and x2 are state space variables. This is a point in a state space plane. We can represent this point in polar coordinates. This distance, that is the distance from the origin to the point, is rho. And the angle that this vector rho makes with the x1 axis is theta. The new coordinates are consequently x1 is rho cosine theta and x2 is rho sine theta. From a mathematical point of view, these two equations transform the original state space model into this form. Rho dot is some function g that we need to determine of rho and theta and theta dot is some function h of rho and theta that we need to determine. Hopefully the mathematical form of this new state space model should be simpler than the mathematical form of these two equations. 
Our first assignment is to derive the first equation of the new state space model. To derive this equation, we will start from the following expression. Let us compute x1 squared plus x2 squared. From these two equations, we obtain rho squared cosine squared theta plus rho squared times sine squared of theta. And this is obviously equal to rho squared simply because cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. Next, we need to differentiate this equation. In order to differentiate this equation, we have to keep in mind that x1 is a function of time, x2 is also a function of time, and rho is also a function of time. Keeping in mind this fact, let us differentiate this equation with respect to time. We have 2 times x1 times x1 dot, we have x1 dot here since x1 is a function of time, plus 2 times x2 times x2 dot is equal to 2 times rho times rho dot. Next, we substitute x1 dot and x2 dot in this equation. Consequently, we obtain 2 times x1 multiplying minus x2 and instead of this term x1 square plus x2 square, I can simply write rho square since I have shown this over here. Consequently, I have plus x1 times rho squared plus 2 times x2 multiplying x2 dot. And from this equation, I obtain that x2 dot is equal to x1 plus x2 multiplying rho squared. And this is equal to 2 times rho times rho dot. Let us simplify the expressions in this equation. We obtain 2 times x1 times x2 with the minus sign plus 2x1 squared times rho squared plus 2x1 x2 plus 2x2 squared multiplying rho squared is equal to 2 times rho times rho dot. I can cancel this term and this term, and I can group this term with this term over here. As the result, I obtain rho squared, two times actually rho squared, x1 squared plus x2 squared is equal to two times rho times rho dot. Next, I have two times rho squared and x1 squared plus x2 squared is equal to rho squared according to this equation is equal to 2 times rho times rho dot. 2 and 2 can be cancelled and I obtain rho to the power 4 is equal to rho times rho dot. Then I can cancel rho and instead of 4 here I will have 3 so I have rho dot is equal to rho to the power 3. And this is our first state space equation in new coordinates. Next, let us obtain the second equation. That is, we need to obtain theta dot as a function of rho and theta. From these two equations, we obtain x2 over x1 is obviously equal to rho sinus theta over rho cosinus theta. That is, x2 over x1 is equal to tangens theta. 
From this equation, we obtain that theta is equal to arctan of x2 over x1. Next, we need to take the first derivative of this equation. While taking the first derivative, we have to keep in mind that x1, x2, theta, and rho are functions of time. Consequently, we have theta dot is equal to first derivative of arc tan of x2 over x1 is 1 over 1 plus x2 over x1 squared, multiplying the derivative of x2 over x1. And the derivative is equal to x1 squared. And in the numerator, we have x2 dot times x1 minus x2 times x1 dot. Next, let us simplify this expression and let us perform all the substitutions. From this equation and this equation, we can substitute x1 dot and x2 dot. So let's do that. Theta dot is equal to. Here we have x1 squared plus x2 squared multiplying x1 squared. Multiplying in the denominator I have x1 squared. Let's see what do I have in the numerator. Instead of x2 dot, I can write this expression where instead of x1 square plus x2 square, I can simply write rho square. So I have x1 plus x2 times rho squared multiplying x1 minus x2 multiplying, let's see what, from this expression I obtain, minus x2 plus x1 rho squared. So I have this term and this term can be cancelled and instead of x1 square plus x2 square I can simply write rho square. Over here if I multiply x1 with this term x2 times rho square I can cancel this term with this term minus x2 multiplying x1 rho square. And as the result, I obtain x1 squared plus x2 squared. This is equal to rho squared over rho squared, or theta dot is equal to 1. And this is the second state space equation. Consequently, our state space model in new coordinates looks like this. Rho dot is equal to rho to the power 3 and theta dot is equal to 1. Next, let us sketch a state space trajectories corresponding to this system. Let us assume that we start from some initial condition rho 0 and theta 0. Graphically, let us assume that we start from here. This is x1, this is x2, this distance over here is rho 0 and this angle is theta 0. Since rho is always larger than 0 and rho dot is of course larger than 0, let us analyze this equation. Rho is always larger than 0. This is because the radius is always larger than zero. This implies that rho dot is always larger than zero. That is, if we start from some rho zero, rho over time will always increase. If this is, for example, rho at some instant five, rho at some instant in the future, rho, for example, 
8 second will be larger. So rho over time always increases. And this can be, for example, rho at the time instant 20. I will erase this since I don't want to mess up my graph. However, this is very important observation. The message is the following. Rho will always increase over time. Let's see what happens with theta. Theta dot is always larger than zero. This means that theta will also increase in time. And it will go in the mathematically positive direction. The mathematical pos mathematically positive direction corresponds to counterclockwise direction. Taking these two important things into fact, we conclude that the state space trajectory will look like this. It will be the spiral with a radius that always increases in time. So if you start from any initial condition, for example, either here, or here, and here, our trajectories will look like this. If you start from here, this will be our state trajectory. If you start from here, this will be our state trajectory. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.